Hey guys, thanks for watching. Um, over the last month, month and a half, I've actually had three rifle barrels on my bolt action guns get burnout. So let's just say I got to spend a lot of time with a gunsmith over the last few weeks. And we had some pretty interesting conversations. And one of them was about barrel breaking. And I know barrel breaking is a pretty controversial type thing. I'm not coming at this like I want an argument or I know everything because I don't. I'm not a barrel maker. I'm not a gunsmith. I'm just passing on some knowledge that this knowledgeable gunsmith told me. Uh, a little background on the gunsmith I'm talking about. He's uh, mid-70s. He's been gunsmithing for 43 years. He travels the country shooting F-Class in Palma. He's actually a state champion and uh, he seems pretty knowledgeable about the uh, the concept of barrel breaking. So it was always something I had questions about. I've always been a, a shoot once, clean once type of guy. Shoot once, sh clean, shoot once, clean. And the reason for me doing that personally was because I wanted to do everything I could to extend the life of the barrel that I'm using. Obviously putting a barrel on your rifle is a, a pretty good investment. You're talking seven, eight hundred dollars and uh, you want to take care of that barrel and get as much out of it as you possibly can. So I've always done the most that I could to maintain the barrel. But this gunsmith actually threw some kind of threw some stuff at me that I never would have thought of and I just wanted to pass that along with you guys. Um, so obviously here's a here's my rifle that I typically shoot matches. You can see I just left the barrel in a white finish because when I first got when I first put the barrel on here I went a little overboard and bar, or, uh, barrels are like tires. You're basically going to burn them out and you're going to have to replace them so there's no real reason to doing anything too fancy especially if you shoot quite a bit or you shoot in competitions you're going to burn those barrels out. If you're a hunter then you may want to go a different way. Um, do something a little fancy, flutes, that type of stuff. But for me, I'm just going to leave it in the white and I'm going to shoot until I got to replace it again. And uh, that's just something I learned over time not to waste money on dumb stuff. But back to barrel break in itself. Uh, when you hear a lot of people talk about barrel break in, they talk in a, they're talking about basically coating the interior of the barrel. Uh, inside of the barrel itself, there's tiny little microscopic pores. And when the, the bullet uh, is ignited, the gunpowder is ignited, the bullet's going to go down the barrel and it's going to push carbon and, and all kinds of stuff down the barrel and it's similar to seasoning in a frying pan. I guess that's a good way to look at it. And what it's going to do is basically just lay a, a, a coating on the barrel and it's going to fill all those tiny little imperfections and it makes cleanup easier and you can kind of build up a, a equilibrium between a few different products that come out of the, the bullet itself. So. I don't know all the specs. Uh, I don't really get into it that much. That's not what I'm talking about. What I want to talk about as far as barrel breaking is on the back side, uh, more down towards the chamber, the throat area. And this is what he, he told me that made a lot of sense. I never really thought of it. When a gunsmith comes in through the back of your, through the back of your barrel, he's actually going to cut it to length and then he's going to run a reamer in the back. And the reamer is going to be the same size as whatever caliber you want, whether you want a, a 6.5 Creedmoor or a 300 uh, Win Mag. The, the reamer is going to be obviously designated to that specific chamber. When he, he, he goes a little farther, goes a little farther to set the headspace, your rifling or your, your, yeah, your rifling is going to run the length of the barrel, and your lance is where the bullet is going to jump from point A to point B before it catches onto the rifling to spin the, the bullet down the chamber. The problem is, if you don't, when you when you shoot, the 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 jump from the bullet to the lands hits a sharp jagged edge, uh, both sides the the high and low or the the sides whatever you want to look at it, the bullet is going to hit those lands and there's a sharp edge from the reamer that the the gunsmith used, that that sharp edge is going to shred parts of the jacket off of the bullet and it's going to send uh, super hot pieces of copper down the barrel itself. That, co that copper is going to get deposited on the interior of your barrel, uh, maybe on the sides of the lands, maybe in between the lands, somewhere that's down the barrel. That hot copper jacket gonna get, is going to stick to that inside of that barrel. As you shoot over and over and over again, that copper just keeps getting hot, super hot and then cools itself and it bonds itself to the interior of the metal. So his thought process on barrel breaking was before you get into the carb, before you get into the shoot clean, shoot clean type thing, basically seasoning in the barrel, you want to break those lands in, which is something I never thought of. So we talked about, here's a little drawn, and let me show you what I'm talking about here. Here's the, uh, the bullet itself. Um, this is obviously the, the, the barrel or the chamber area. This would be your lands up here. 
the bullet is going to jump from point A to point B and the ogive, or the fat part of the bullet, is going to hit these sharp edges and it's going to shred parts of the jacket. The, the pieces of copper are going to get pushed down the barrel and they're going to bond to the inside of the barrel down here, which is not typically what you want to do, or what he said you shouldn't do. So what he said to do was basically shoot squib loads. Uh, what he does is takes 10 uh, light powered loads. Um, what I did was I typically shoot in the low 40s of H4350. I actually shoot 42.5 of H4350 and I'm getting around 2800 to 2805 speed. That's pushing it um, on the high end. I'm, I'm not getting any high pressure signs or anything like that. But uh, that's where I typically shoot. So what I did was um, I told him when I was shooting, when I was shooting for a load, so he told me to try 30 grains of H4350, load 10 of them, and I'm going to shoot 10 rounds through the barrel before I start my shoot clean, shoot clean process. And the whole purpose of this is to file down, is to file down these edges here, and, oh, wrong end. Shoot 10 rounds, and I, and the whole point of this is to round off these lands. And that will reduce the copper that's getting shredded. That'll reduce the copper that's getting shredded from the bullet making contact with those lands and minimize the copper that's getting pushed to the end. After the, after the, the, uh, the lands are kind of rounded off a little bit, um, then you can go to your shoot once, clean once, shoot one, clean once. The low power loads are going to are gonna minimize that. They're going to minimize the, uh, the stress and the damage down this this area which is the most important part and then we can get on to seasoning the barrel I just wanted to share that with you guys feel free to comment uh, maybe we can get a dialogue going down here let me know how you guys um, break in a barrel what you guys' processes are it is kind of a controversial type thing I'm not coming at this like this guy knows everything I just want to throw this at you um, it's something I never thought of maybe it's something you guys never thought of and that's the uh, barrel breaking that this guy told me so Thank you guys for watching. Haven't subscribed, please do. Like the video, and I'll catch you on the next one.